Hi, I'm Will, and this is the 31 Days of Lifetime, a sort of advent calendar for women living my dream of traveling in 2020. I've made it my mission to watch every single offering in Lifetime's 2020 holiday catalog, but I won't be doing it alone. Each day I'll be joined by a special guest or guests that will help me dig in to these instant Christmas classics. Today, I'm joined by the love of my lifetime, Jenna Kirking. Merry Christmas, Will. Merry Christmas, Jenna. We are going to be discussing the seventh film in Lifetime's lineup, The Christmas Yule Blog. Caroline Williams, a well-known social media travel writer, is given the assignment to cover a hundred-year-old Christmas parade in the small town of Carta de Amor, New Mexico. Not excited about the assignment, Caroline goes anyway and meets a high school music teacher, Oscar Ortiz, who introduces her to a side of Christmas that she has never seen, with different traditions and meanings. In the 12 days before Christmas, Caroline falls in love with Christmas all over again and finds true love herself. The Christmas Yule blog premiered on November 6th and stars Sarah Canning and Zach Santiago. Okay, Jenna, I'm gonna be real. This is my seventh movie so far. I am over one fifth of the way into these films, which is not much. And honestly, I'm starting to lose my mind, I think. I don't blame you, especially with classics such as the Christmas Yule blog. And I haven't even gotten to such hits as Feliz Navidad. Here's, here's why I'm telling you all of this, that I'm seven movies in, I'm seven movies deep now. Um, I didn't take notes. I didn't take a single note, not one note. I know that you did and I'm glad you did, but I've been taking notes for six movies. I said, you know what? I need to change how I go about these things. My so no more notes. No more getting deep into the movie and talking about every single thing. We're going into it like this. I've got some questions for you, but honestly, we do not need to talk about the plot of this movie because they're all the same. So if you want to know the plots to these movies, watch any of them. Now that I've expressed that I'm losing brain cells, what is your relationship with Lifetime Christmas movies? I am more of a uh, Freeform or ABC Family original Christmas movie gal. Familiar with the format, obviously, but Lifetime movies were exclusive to my grandma's home. What did you think of our two leads? This could be acting, this could be the characters. Our two leads had awful chemistry, like actually awful chemistry. I found myself, I have um, a note here that I took, I put timestamps for some of them because I thought that that was important. At an hour and 10 minutes in, I said, I feel like I've had secondhand embarrassment this entire movie. Don't sue me, don't attack me. But I thought in the grand scheme of things, this is movie seven. I thought they had good chemistry. No! <laughs> Will, no! They did not have good chemistry. She was exchanging flirty, like, interactions by going to his arm at, like, this, like, at a, mm -hmm. like, corona distance. This is a li Lifetime movie. I want romance. I want to feel swept off my feet. I want to feel butterflies like I felt when I watched Twilight in theaters for the first time. Fair, fair. I just think I've seen far worse so far. Okay, this maybe there has been worse, no. but like, shoot. Um, okay, let's talk about each of them individually. Individually, I um, have another note that says, I don't like this girl, she sucks. Again, par for the course. He seems like a great guy. Uh, 10 out of 10, stand up man. She also didn't realize that he had a dead wife, I think. And I'm like, how? 41 minutes in and we're just now getting confirmation of a dead spouse. You would think that, cause I think in most of these movies, the male actor is, maybe it's my internal sexism. Male actor is better than the female actor. And it's weird because you would think yeah, more exactly. women would be auditioning for this these yeah. movies. I don't think either, I'd like, that's the thing, is that like, I don't think she was a bad actress. No, they were fine. And I just think that like, they wrote this character to be like the biggest, like face first in the point and you still missed it. Well, baby, that's Lifetime. What'd you think of the guy? I thought he was nice. He was, he yeah, was I liked sweet. him. He 
he seemed like a, like I said, like a stand-up guy. Hated when they had to ADR his guitar. I don't think that was his voice. That was like a Drew Seeley moment. Tu soja son eterna, o árbol de la Navidad. There's probably some PA that they it were like, It was the oh, kid. We forgot. It was the we son. They were like, we've got to hire someone. You. Quick, get in there. Yeah. But he was likable. I liked, I liked his conflict uh, when he was, he, I would assume that this was his first relationship since his wife had passed. And I liked that they gave it a brief moment of him being like, give me a moment. I liked Now, that. did that play she, out fully in a satisfying no, way? It was, no. Oh, yeah, that, that kid, can we talk about him for a moment? The worst. He was trying so hard. Yeah, and it was frustrating to watch. I don't like child actors who talk like adults. I didn't like that his motivation was that he wanted to be a travel writer. You probably identify as a millennial, yeah? Sure. Let's talk about it. I, look at me. Gen Z, hello. I feel like, I'm sure there are a lot of like young Gen Zers see like lifestyle blogging and blogging and like YouTubing, and like that kind of like career path as like mm. their dream job. And so like sitting there- I guess there, that's a good point. No. no. No Gen Zer is watching that movie. But now that you say I that, it like it makes more world. sense. I think that's just because like watching these movies, it feels like they're written by fifty-year-olds for fifty-year-olds, and nothing feels like it's actually twenty twenty. Yeah. You know, I will say, um, in all of these movies, there are two key moments. Key One is the meet cute, mm -hmm. which was pretty weak in this it, one. It was not almost non-existent. There was no opening song. That there usually is. No. Well, do you remember how this movie opened? Normally, it's like, like you said, like a, like a montage. Montage like, song. You would, like some shots of the city. If this were a Netflix original, she would get some stock footage of Chicago, mm -hmm. and you know, you'd have a nice little upbeat pop Christmassy song going right. on in the background. It would be so much fun. This one came out with a bang. We're in a boardroom, and the woman in charge, she's like, Camilla. One you placed and she was like oh it was a group win and she goes a group third place third place yep it happens and then it goes bom, bom. <laughs> yeah it was a weird opening and then they met at the train station and it was it's a bad meet the, the other thing in these movies is they try to make like a tradition like a christmas tradition this one had too many yeah i put um the decorating as like a prominent scene. I felt like that was like the like, you know what I mean? That was one that stuck out to me, but also their breakup was cringy. Can we talk about that for a moment? You're gonna hate me. Do you not think it was cringy? I thought it was I so liked cringy. it. You know what, sue me, whatever. I thought Miss Sarah Canning sold that scene well. She felt genuinely distraught is I would assume that we're about like an hour and 20 minutes into the movie at this point. For me, I think this is where we, this is where we, our chemistry thing differed, is that like, I felt like there was absolutely no chemistry throughout the film. So when she's breaking up with him crying, I just was like, okay, like I feel uncomfortable. I, I dash, yeah, I understand. I mean, again, like the tears, sold it for me more than most of these movies do that yeah. they did this little how is this like my big moment of the movie but like there was they're breaking up and they're holding hands and she does this thing where she's like holding on to his finger you know what oh well, that's that was like nice. a subtle nice moment these movies rarely do that everyone's always like but there were some little moments where i'm like you know what they made choices unfortunately they were gifted a script written by old men and for old women don't call me an old woman <laughs> jenna what was the big like what scene stuck out to you what scene do you want to dig into i think the ornament scene was is something we should talk about you're from a small town does your small town do stuff like this no right. well no okay we have like a, a decoration like contest in the park that's, that's like our thing but we don't have like a Everyone come together and... Yeah, but like, you know. the only thing that my hometown has is the world's largest lit up Santa, I think. But, 
I just thought that that was like a cute, like that's not something I've seen, like to make it like the ornament is your wish. And then like the whole town puts, like I thought that was sweet. I thought that was cute. Like in her buying the ornament and like being, being conflicted of whether or not she wanted to choose the world or Christmas skate girl with reindeer antlers. Confusing ornament. I, I thought it was, I thought the overall sentiment was, was sweet. Yeah, behind it that. was sweet. The thing is you could see the, the do you want to call it a twist? Could we talk, call it a twist of her talking? being like, I chose the wrong thing a mile away. Like uh, she obviously, I was like, I, what do I pick? 40 minutes in, prediction. She has to choose between love and her dream job. She chooses love, duh. The moral of these movies is so sad. It's like, you know what, women? Yes, sell yourself you short. Have to, you have to choose between your dream job and your dream relationship. It's a travel job also for like Why writing she... articles. Why would, Santa oh. Watch 2020. Santa Watch. Oh, and all these movies, is Santa real? A question I always wonder. We yeah. are one out, of, one out of seven. He's been real. He's not real in this one, guys. Oh, I think he is. No, I think he's not real. I think she was just, <laughs> the reason she asked was because she finally believed in the magic of Christmas. Yeah, but how did he know what her ornament was? Hmm. He's Santa. Okay, okay, one one and a half out of Yeah, okay. We can seven. we can't agree. Well maybe he is Santa. I think he's Santa. So why then is Mrs. Claus such a frigid bitch? Okay, let's play a game. I'm... Now that I'm not taking notes, I can see how many names I can remember. Okay. The main girl is Caroline. I know that. Oscar, who I kept wanting to call Owen. The Ooh. cook is Sam. Mama or Mrs. C. Mr. C or Mr. Santa. I think that's it. I think that's all I have. Oh, Camilla is her boss. Oh, the kid's name was Sean. Oh. Didn't he say like Sam or something? No, Sam was the cook. Oh, Who okay. was the, ugh, worked on a school? Or was the, like a, a five-star chef? Why? Like, I get that it's like rude for her to be like, why are these people Eddie. here? But like because genuinely, why are these people here? Before we wrap up, I've got two closing questions for you. Question one. Oscar, as portrayed by Zach Santiago. Mm -hmm. On a scale of one to 10, mm -hmm. how dateable is Oscar? I'd probably give him like a solid eight. I'd maybe even give him an 8.5. I was very charmed by him. I don't know about you. Good for him. I highest, highest score so far. I just feel like he was a solid guy. Granted, I'm 23, therefore I'm not ready for a solid guy yet. I'm ready for someone to ruin my life. Yeah, I want an asshole who- Like, let's go. Breaks my heart. In a few years, 10 out of 10. Yeah, I and he has, five. here's the thing, is the kid a deal breaker? No, kid's old. He's old enough to be his own human. I got the vibe during this that the kid was not happy that his dad was getting into a relationship. Ooh. Well, he also like loves her as a writer. So could you imagine if like your one of your parents died and then they married like a celebrity you like? Uh, anyway. <laughs> yeah, eight and a half. Um, I think that that's fair. Final question. Who to you was the MVP of this movie? My gut says Mr. C. In the end, she was like, you're gonna miss the parade. And he was like, nah, that parade sucks. He wasn't wrong. He's like, I'm tired. Yeah, Mr. C, he kept yeah. it real and magical. Jenna, where can people find you? I am at Jenna Kirking on every single platform. That's fantastic, good for you. This movie's taken a lot out of me. Thank you so much for being here. And thank you for watching. I'll be back tomorrow to talk about a welcome home Christmas with Megan Tiller. And every day this month to chat about a different Christmas flick. If you had a holly jolly time watching this video, you can go ahead and hit that like button. And if you want to follow me into my descent into lifetime madness, you can subscribe and press that little bell icon because every time a bell rings, you'll get notified about a new video that I post. I'll see you next time. Merry Christmas. And yes, my lights fell down right before I filmed this. Please don't ask. <laughs>